James, I'm the Head of Recruitment at uh, Buff.Latham, Latham, which I assume most of you haven't heard of before. I certainly hadn't heard of uh, Buff.Latham Latham before I joined, or at least put in my submission uh, five years ago. Uh, but we are a private bank uh, based in the city in London, and I'll talk you through a little bit more about who we are and what we do in a moment to set the scene. Uh, but today's presentation, uh, the first time Twister, is effective recruitment processes to maximise your hiring success. So what I'm going to talk about really is our journey from very bare bones when I joined, what we've done, how we've changed, what we've implemented, and the results of that implementation. So as I said, just to give you an overview of who Abathnot Latham are. So we're a private bank, we date back to the 1830s, uh, so a very long history, but really seen a lot of change and growth over the last five years. So five years ago, our parent company, Abathnot Banking Group, had a majority share holding in one other bank, which we called Plus Bank. They sold that, raised some capital, and that's been invested into our Buffalo Latham. Um, so we've done, we were a private bank underpinned by wealth planning and investment management, so dealing with high net worth individuals. Um, but five years ago, we started a commercial bank as well, focusing on small and medium sized businesses, uh, and we've done a couple of acquisitions um, of some finance businesses. So we've gone from about 300 people four or five years ago and to now more or less 520. It's a very traditional relationship-led banking. So it's all about the relationships with our clients, the long-term benefits. We're quite risk-averse. We don't take big risks with our clients' money. Um, but having said that, we are quite entrepreneurial. We have a lot of investment into IT, into our banking platforms, new CRM system, into our new branding, which went live um, uh, a year or so back, and we'll see some of the branding as we go through. But that's been incorporated into our new careers website as well. So what we're trying to portray is that we're not a stuffy old men in grey suits. It's a very entrepreneurial place to work. I love working there. Um, people say it's like they're working in a, a non-stop startup um, because of the amount of innovation and change that we've gone through. So the recruitment team is uh, myself and uh, Lisa, who come here today. Uh, so there's two of us, and we have an administrator as well. Um, and reporting to uh, the HR director. And over the last four or five years, taking into account attrition and the growth rate, we've, we've been hiring about 100 people per year. Um, what I thought would be useful, just to sort of give you an idea of what we're about, is play you a short video, it's about two minutes, um, really about the branding, how we connect with our clients, what we're about, it's about chasing perfection, doing the right thing, aiming for excellence. And we usually use this on our careers website, and the candidates always remark on it, it's a really good flavour of what the bank does, because not many people do know what we are about. So I'll just play the video next. Sorry, that's really loud. <laughs> <laughs> that's too loud, right? Um, do you have to turn it down? Maybe it's just on the keyboard. Uh, like the that. sound people will have to do it because I don't want to mess around with it. Do you want me to grab them? <laughs> journey we've been on over the last uh, four or five years. So starting off when I joined uh, five years ago, uh, it was a very basic recruitment system. In fact, there wasn't really a great recruitment system at all. As I mentioned before, our parent company owned the other bank. It used to be run through that bank, not through a black of Latham. So it was paper-based. It was literally a A4 piece of paper to um, sign off recruitment. Um, lots of questions on that. The high manager would uh, put it in physically send it in the internal post or physically to the head of department, then internal post to finance to sign it off, then uh, internal post through to us. A week's gone by, and for a four-week notice period, you're already 25% down on, on your lead-in time. So really clunky, uh, not very effective. Um, sorry, um, Candidates applied via job boards, so we had LinkedIn, and that was pretty much it. But all the, it was best to go through emails, so we'd get pinged 100 emails a day, all different jobs. 
but really clunky. Uh, no careers website, about 60% agency usage when we started off. Uh, pretty basic interview process as well, two stages and, uh, and a couple of sort of homemade um, assessments, checking tests and that kind of thing. Um, at that point, we hadn't quite started that growth trajectory, but it was on the, on the cusp of, hence we wanted to bring it in-house um, and put some plans together to make it more efficient and effective, uh, and at the same time started thinking about the rebranding for the bank, which hopefully, like the Peacocks, that's our, our, our the Peacock is our brand, um, and we use the Peacock letters in our branding. So that's where we were when we started off. We had a vision. Um, and it was to connect people, processes and technology to deliver an outstanding online candidate and hiring manager experience. We wanted to engage with and get the best out of our candidates and we wanted to identify the best talent faster and smarter. So that was our vision at the time we didn't really know how we were going to go about getting to that point. Uh, so we had a brainstorm and, and set some objectives. So the first one was pretty obvious, we wanted to go paperless. It was such a, really, frankly, a waste of time going through that process, um, physically sending a piece of paper around the business. We wanted to create and refresh our careers website. As I said, we didn't really have one at the beginning. Um, we wanted to make sure the most relevant candidates are invited to interview in a timely manner. Include elements in the recruitment process that objectively test candidates' ability for the role. Ensure the bank gets the best out of the people they hire and reduce agency spend. Um, when I joined, it was about half a million a year on agency costs, to give you an idea of how much we were spending. And that's on a, a headcount of about 300 people in, in the business. So I thought it would be useful to talk about how we actually went about implementing the changes. Once we set our goals, we wanted to go and reach out to the stakeholders in the business, get their buy-in uh, to go with a new ATS system, why that's going to be efficient for them. High managers don't really, in my experience, care about the cost of hire, it's more about how, get, how quickly you can get talent, really good talent, onto seats quickly. And that's where the ATS comes in, to, to increase the, uh, uh, or reduce the times to hire. What impact it would have for them, it's so much easier for them just to click on a link and approve a, a vacancy or raise a vacancy than it is to do it uh, via paper. We also wanted to talk to them about um, testing and assessment for candidates, and also video interviewing. Um, I've heard about video interviewing, video interviewing at one of these events, the benefits of doing a video interview, um, both for the candidate, uh, for them to be able to do a video at home, so the high manager asks five questions on the video, it's typically me has to record it, um, but we send that to the candidate, they answer those five questions at home, it takes them 20 minutes or so, and then the high manager can review those questions and make, make a decision as to whether they want to proceed or not. Um, and most high managers really bought into that, particularly, particularly ones which have high turnover of staff and have lots of applicants because they can quickly sit through five minute videos uh, and decide to take forward to the face to face interviews. So they might have bought into uh, the video interviewing ideas um, and also went through the different departments to find out which department wanted what type of assessment for their candidates, whether it was just a, a simple checking accuracy test, whether it was more of a numerical test verbal reasoning, general, general intelligence test, and what we found is that it was quite dependent on the different departments, so very worthwhile having those meetings with those department heads to find out what they wanted. Um, but by far the most popular was an accuracy test for our client, for our candidates to go through the process. So a lot of time was spent with the business really uh, trying to work out what they wanted and how we could help them uh, by partnering with the right uh, businesses to, to implement it. So we were engaged with uh, Eploy, who, who provide our ATS, um, with SHL, who provide F, um, psychometric testing, and with Launchpad, which is now outmatched to do the video interviews. So to give you an idea of the time frames for the journey, and I'll talk you through what those actual assessments and the ATS looks like. But the implementation, we really started when I joined in July 26. 2016, uh, started searching for the ATS provider. In March 2017, we formally engaged with Eploy. Um, I think the wedding ring's quite 
<laughs> Maybe not appropriate, but we did engage with them. Um, April to October, did a lot of planning, testing, and implementation of, of ePloy into the business, and really trying to decide exactly how we wanted it to function for our business requirements. There was quite a lot of tweaking that needed to be done to get it right for what we needed. I uh, went live in January uh, 2018 with the ATS and the new Curious website, which ePloy um, managed for us. And I'll talk you through how that integrates with the job boards shortly. Um, then we started having those conversations with the business about um, assessments and video interviewing in spring 2019. We engaged with SHL and Launchpad in September 2019 uh, and uh, went live um, with the integration of the autumn 2019 and went live just at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so it gave us a bit of time to, to, to really integrate that well. Uh, and it's served us really well over the last two years. So I thought it would be useful to talk through what the actual process looks like now. Um, so when a high manager raises a vacancy, um, the admin team, so there's four, four portals on the eploy. There's the candidate portal, you can go and apply for a job. So every time they click on a job advert on LinkedIn or Total Jobs or one of the other job boards, it will direct them to our website. Uh, and they link, uh, they can apply, and they can see where their status is um, when they go into their portal, and they do all their onboarding through the portal as well. Then there's a hiring manager portal, uh, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. But that's where they can raise the vacancy, track the candidates, make notes, make the offers, do all the approvals process. Um, then there's the agency portal. So an agency, if you want to release a a role to an agency. They can upload the CV through their portal. And finally, there's the admin on user portal, which is the back end. So when a, uh, all our job vacancies were uploaded onto um, ePloy or the templates, clearly as it's a brand new role, we'll create a new template and put that on. But essentially what happens when a high manager goes in, they have a drop list, drop down list of all the different um, vacancies uh, by department and they choose the um, vacancy or the job spec they want to raise. They put in then their details, and this is bespoke to us. These are the fields that we wanted as a bank. So there's extra things, because we're banks on the staff are certified, which means they give advice, which is a different candidate journey from others. Um, so there's different fields um, which we can play around with. Obviously, a reason for hire, but it's new or replacement. And then if it's replacement, they type in the uh, candidate's name it's replacing, or the employee's name it's replacing. Um, salary, a number of positions, if it's contract or perm. And some of these fields, once you um, enter them or open up new fields, um, so it's fixed term contract, it will say how long is it for, etc. And then they have a, um, a really smart system. So if it's a replacement role, the system will only allocate the head of department to um, authorise the vacancy. But if it's a new role, it will have two approvals. It will be the head of department and finance, because finance don't really care if it's a replacement hire, um, but they do care if it's a new hire. So the, um, these are drop down menus again, has the list of head of departments, and then the second list is just the head of finance. Uh, and the uh, high manager then sends it for approval, and the head of department and head of finance then get emailed, and they simply just click on the link and, and approve or decline the vacancy. And then from a back end user perspective, we can see where the vacancy is in the approval process with, it, with the HRVPs. So all the HRVPs get to see vacancies as they come through. They add in the benefits for the role. And it goes to the head of department, finance, and then the recruitment team um, to go live, which typically takes between 24 and 48 hours, which is so much quicker than the, the week we were spending before with the paper-based system. And then from a um, user's perspective, on the right-hand side, we can see where when a candidate applies, it sits in um, high manager review or review stage. Um, we as a recruitment team will review the candidates, and we can simply just slide the candidates across first stage interview, launch pad video interview, um, psychometric testing, etc. And the high manager will see that in their um, uh, portal below. On the left-hand side, you can see uh, where the candidates are. So 
the hire manager can go in, we'll screen the candidates first, make sure they're suitable, go to the hire manager review, then they can go in, they can have a quick view uh, of their CV, or they can actually click in the name and see all the details of the candidate um, and the full CV, salary expectations, we ask what their salary expectations when they apply, and then it's up to the hire manager whether they want to progress through to the uh, video interviews or not. Um, most do, most want to do the video interview and also the SHL testing. So I'll tell you that is a really poor picture of me just testing out the uh, video interview. But I just wanted to give you what, an idea of what it looks like. So when the high manager goes into their portal, click on the candidate's name, they've done the uh, video, they click on a link and it brings up, pops up uh, the video of the candidate with the five questions uh, and you can see how they've, how they've responded. We've set it up so that candidates can re-record their answers as many times as they like. Some businesses just to get one chance before that's a bit, bit unfair for, for candidates. Yeah, we have, um, and it's been really positive. So the way we do it is that we, we all speak to the candidate beforehand. We won't just send them an email saying you've been successful, please do the, um, please do the video. We do speak to the candidates first. So we do the initial phone screen, we'll sift through the CVs, as I'm sure most people, 80% are, are, are not relevant, and we get 10 to 20% who are relevant. We'll give them a call, see how they sound, share them with the hire manager, um, and if then the hire manager wants to proceed, um, we'll send them the link. But when we have that screening call, we'll explain what the process is so they're aware of what's going to happen. Um, actually, when the, link, when the candidate gets the link to do it, we also have a, a welcome message from our CEO. And it's a really nice sort of four or five minute talk about how the bank has grown, what we're all about, uh, and, and candidates really like that as well. Um, so that's, that's, and I'd recommend that. It's really engaging for candidates to hear from a CEO. Just saying thank you for... Um, your interest is a bit more about the bank than what we do. Um, so yeah, and, and the feedback we get, I'll go on to the feedback we have from candidates at the end, but we have a onboarding survey six months after candidates join with a whole load of questions, um, but the feedback we've got from candidates is it's really good because they, the way I set it to candidates is, you know, you can do it in your own time, it literally takes 20 minutes in your own space, and if you are called then to interview, you're going to be in my smaller candidate pool, maybe we only take like five or six people through to interview. At the back of that was, you know, maybe 10, 15 to go to a face-to-face -face interview initially, so they've got a much better chance of getting through to the, the office stage. Um, and then there's just a couple of examples of what the psychometric uh, looks like. So we have the assessments, which are the checking tests, which are percentile scores, so um, percentile against the population, which is this one here. So the checking test, which is the accuracy test. Um, and then we have also uh, psychometric um, personality questionnaires as well. And there's a couple of reports we can pull off. Um, the top one is what we send to the hiring managers, which is like a, uh, based on competencies, and there's a RAG report where their strengths lie. And you can, you can make that specific to your competencies in the bank or whichever organisation. Uh, and then the, the bottom one is sort of like the raw data, as it were, which is a list of 40 different traits. So the traits could be something like... Um, read my hand, uh, adhering to rules, that kind of thing, and where they lie on that trait, whether they really like having working to rules or really don't like being told what to do. And that really formulates the discussion at the final stage interview. So we do the psychometrics between the first stage and the second stage interview, and that really frames the second stage interview. We also use it to get the best out of our candidates when they join. Anybody got any other questions on that? Yeah. Still a question. From a diversity perspective, do you feel that focusing psychometric testing and perhaps excluding some candidates from applying or progressing through the process? Seen any impact of that? We, we haven't, to be honest. I think, um, I don't think the psychometric testing hasn't, but certainly not from the personality question, yeah, we won't use that as a decision-making tool. It's just a, a guide for the si final stage interview. Um, but with the assessments, it is really critical for some of those roles that we have people who are accurate, you know, we're dealing with people's money, we need them to be accurate. And that's the main test that we use. Um, and I think actually on the point of diversity, I think that having a video interview is, is beneficial um, because you get to see someone, you know, based on, the, based on the CV alone, I think somehow high managers can be 
put up by the, what the school they went to or which university they went to. And we've had occasions where, like, wow, actually, the candidates really presented themselves pretty well. And the video interview led to bring them in when perhaps they wouldn't have done um, before. And, and vice versa, CV looks great, really poor, really poor communication skills, presentation skills, couldn't answer the questions being asked. So it's a really good tool to filter people out uh, based on ability. Uh, we do. So we do caveat the email um, for for the dyslexia, but more so on the site on the assessments, to be honest. Um, but we do have disclaimer on the video interviews as well. That's yeah. Um, no, we would take it offline, but the assessments can the time can be extended. Um, so, Will, are you saying that you use video interviews and psychometric testing? For every single vacancy? No, so so we recommend it. It's, it, it depends on the vacancy, really, and, and the department. Yeah. So for really senior hires, um, sort of directing above, you probably wouldn't do the video interview because I don't think it's appropriate. Video interviews, really, for the high turnover roles, uh, and typically for roles we get lots and lots of vacant uh, applicants for. So quite a lot of the operations types of roles, um, some in finance. Um, we did it for HR, some of our HR yeah. roles recently as well. And the video interviews came pre-pandemic. It was a decision you'd made that Correct, has yeah. proved quite, I guess, It has proved useful during the yeah. pandemic, but um, yeah, it was pre pre-pandemic decision. On, on the basis that it'll save time. Save time for the candidate and save time for the hiring manager. Yes. So you don't necessarily give a choice to your hiring managers to say you can meet them in person or you can video interview. It's up to you. The standard is it's a video interview. So, so they, the, the hiring managers will meet the candidate um, it's just really used, it's used as a first stage after an initial chat on the phone to set the scene yeah. with me and then, and then they do the, the candidate is invited to do the video interview and then the high manager then decides on the back of that whether they invite them to the face-to-face -face interview. The final stage is always the face-to-face. -face. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not in the pandemic, it's been on, 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 yes. on Zoom and yeah. Teams, but yeah. Okay. It'll be interesting how it pans out now yeah. that the pandemic's coming to an end. I think for us it's probably will be still using Zoom and, and Teams for the first stage and maybe just have the second stage yeah. sure. properly face to face. It'd be interesting right. to know what other people are doing, but I think that's probably where we're going to head to. I mean, everybody likes, everybody seems to like the convenience of the Teams video call because you don't have to take time off work or to make some excuse as to why you're not in the office. Any other questions on that? What's the GDPR impact on the video call? Yeah, so good question. Compliance was all over this. Um, it's, uh, it's written, we've got policies for both SHL and um, uh, video interviewing, uh, but only the high manager can view the video and admin. No one else can access those videos. Um, you, can, you can send a link, but it expires after 24 hours. So if you have someone who's not the, aligned as the high manager to the vacancy but wants to review the video, you can do it through a link, but that expires after 24 hours. Um, and they, they um, the psychometric testing um, self describes after 72 days or something, it just disappears. No one has access to it at all, not even, not even we have it. So you have to take a copy if you want to keep it for a successful candidate. But all the unsuccessful candidates, I think after, it's probably more than 72 days, it's, it's six months, I think, will just automatically be deleted. I can't remember the finer details, but yeah, compliance really on top of this, I've got it right. Um, so the onboarding, onboarding process, um, again this is all done through ePloy, um, so the hire manager creates an offer on ePloy, they fill in the details of the salary they want to offer, again goes through that drop down to the approvals process, and again it's smart as it recognises if the salary offer is over the initial budget set out for the role, and then it'll go back to the finance, but if it's within the budget, it just goes to the head of department, uh, and it comes through to us to make the verbal offer. At that point, we'll get the passport and privacy notice from the candidate um, to do the background checks. Um, the onboarding team will create, they have different templates of the type of um, contract we're producing, um, but the data from the ePoy system will feed into that contract, you know, name, address, um, offer, salary, benefits, etc. Um, obviously that's a four I check, but that gets um, put onto the uh, candidates portal, they log in, they can see all their onboarding documents there, pension forms, everything else, death in service, etc. 
Uh, they complete that, we can track that on the system, how they're getting on. Um, and we've actually built an API uh, with eCloy so that data dump of all the candidate information can then be fed into our HR systems. Uh, and then uh, six months after they join, we ask candidates to do an onboarding and recruitment survey. So that's really the process, the new process, which is much faster. I'll go through the other sort of more statistical uh, results, but given that it sort of went live during COVID, it's kind of difficult to differentiate what impact this has had and what impact um, COVID has had. Um, so verbal feedback is really key at the moment, um, and we have some great feedback from hiring managers um, and, and candidates, both on the uh, speed of the process, the look of the process, um, how they can make a more informed decision as to who to offer. So our time to offer, I mean, it doesn't look like a massive change, but going from 43 network days to 35 uh, network days is about 18% quicker, 20% quicker than we were doing before. Um, but bearing in mind, we've added in those extra steps of the video interview and the assessment, which you'd think probably makes the process longer. The whole system with the ATS has made, has made the whole process a little bit shorter, which is good. And that's a rolling average. Staff turnover, again, how much you can put this down to um, assessments and getting the right candidates as opposed to pandemic, it's difficult to tell, but it has a massive impact. And we're in for, compared to um, other businesses, we think we've got a, a better reduction here, uh, which is probably down to the assessments that we've we've made and getting the right, the right candidates in. So it's sort of halved, halved our attrition rates. And you can see the cost of it. So the first line is when we introduce um, employed second line, uh, vertical lines, when we introduce the assessments. And you can see the reduction in agency costs as we started getting the right candidates through the door and not having to rely on agencies so much. Um, that's the agency year-to-date costs. So it's gone from about 500 million Sorry, 500,000 um, <laughs> in November 17, that would be the job, um, to uh, around 220,000 now. We dipped down to about 150 during the pandemic. And then I did an uh, agency cost divided by total number of hires just to see what, it, trying to mitigate the impact of, um, of the pandemic, because we did have less um, hires during the pandemic, obviously. How many people are there in your internal team? Is it, There's you two. There's two. Um, these are joined uh, in summer 2019, uh, and then we have an administrator as well. It's like a shared resource, yeah. but she'll do um, you know, job postings. Um, she'll help with uploading a, a vacancy if the hire manager gets stuck. And has that stayed the same throughout these changes, or was it higher before? No, it's less before. before. But we always need that. Um, we need to take the resource. So the bank was growing, and the number of um, vacancies was going up. Out of interest, mm. um, employee numbers wise, what were you back in back kind of May 2017 to now? The total number of employees, you? probably about three, 280, 300 to now 520. Yeah. Your, your time to hire stats you showed, mm. I think it was something like 43 to 35 uh, days. Where are you taking the start point and end point for that? Because it seems mightily impressive if it's from on application to the end of the onboarding. So it's, so it's net, network days, so networking days, and it's from the date that the um, head of department or the finance director approves the vacancy through the day that we send the offer letter to the candidate. And that's the average from that point to offer stage, 35 days. Yeah, so it's seven weeks. Yeah. Is where the agency costs have shot up at February 21. Um, surely, on this implementation that you've done, is to reduce the agency costs. So, may I ask what was the, the spike in February 21? Yeah. You know what? It's, it's, it's a couple of outliers, a couple of really senior hires that we made, okay. which were through an agency. Um, I mean, so the, would the, you not run campaigns in terms of your um, setting up an internal sort of database? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's always going to be outliers which the business um, yeah, introduced to, but yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing how one or two big outliers can make a, 
a massive change to it, and or average. Yeah. And also, I mean, there's a pickup in the market. We're recruiting a lot more. We're back to pre-pandemic levels now, really, in recruitment. Um, and you can see the impact then on agency being in blue, referrals and sort of light purple and directs in um, darker purple. So we've always had a really good referral um, scheme and, and um, responses to the referral scheme. You ask every new starter who, who they can recommend, and that's, that's um, done as well. Do you reward the referrals? Can I yeah, can so I it's a thousand, it's a thousand pounds. So it's a thousand pounds and it's paid um, after probation. Successful probation. <laughs> <laughs> and then the final results is really about the, the for me, probably one of the most important is the candidate um, thoughts of the journey. Uh, and really pleasing, it's been at 99% excellent for the recruitment experience overall. Um, and uh, it's quite good, it's just breaks it down to the different areas, but you can see that most candidates are really engaged. And it comes back to the question, are, are, are candidates put off by the video interview? I was worried about that. I was worried about candidates being turned off through the process because it's too much. Um, and we're very conscious of that when um, candidates first made that application, how much we asked them to do at that stage should be done, put candidates off. So it's a very easy registration and application process. It's literally name, email address, upload your CV, and then you gradually introduce bits through the process. We're very upfront when we can speak to the candidates what the process involves and why we do it. Um, uh, but you know, the, the candidates have been brought into the process, they like it, they feel like they've got the right level of assessment to be, feel like proud they've got the job, and that they're the right fit for, they are the right fit for them, and they're the right fit for us. Um, so that's the end of the presentation. Um, any questions at all? Could I just ask about the slide then? So when you're evaluating success, you know, the experience, mm. is it both successful and unsuccessful? So, the, so this one is for candidates who've, who've been on board as so successful candidates, which I appreciate you normally get good response to, yeah. so no one's not saying uh, bad things. We do do another one, um, anecdotal, it's not, it's not for a system, it's more of an anecdotal feedback we have, uh, but still it's pretty good. Um, the, you know, you'll be getting more people who are disgruntled not, not being offered the role, because they're disgruntled because they haven't been offered the role. Um, but it's still sort of in the, in the late 80s of satisfaction excellent. You mentioned that you you question at six months. So is this the result of the six months survey? So this is this is this is a combination of the last um, I think it's eighteen months okay. of people who have taken the survey six months after they've started. Yeah. yeah. So I think it cost about a hundred people last time. Yeah. Um, Given um, what you were saying earlier about the brand identity mm -hmm. perhaps not being as prominent um, as, uh, as some others, and also the quite unique culture that seems to be this entrepreneurial feel, how did you blend educating the applicants about what it's like to work for you throughout the process? Was it video interview? Was it element of the assessments? How did you go about letting them decide? Was it yeah, I, I, it's really important that they understand what we're about. So that, certainly when I joined, I was like, I'm not sure I want to work in a, a private bank. It's going to be, frankly, a bit boring. Um, so there's an education piece. I, I, I try to be treated candidate before we go through uh, to the interview stage to sort them through. And, you know, I've got a bit of a, a passer which goes off now uh, talking about the bank. I mean, to talk about things like, you know, um, we've got a team of bankers who look after entrepreneurs. We, we partner with Cass Business School. We do like a Dragon's Den event each year. Um, so up and coming entrepreneurs can come in. We literally have the X Factor type voting buttons. So they have clients and staff there. There are five or sort of six different startup businesses p pitching. Uh, it's a great evening, drinks, canopies, that sort of thing. So, sort of trying to bring it to life a little bit more. Um, and, and the video you know, really does engage people as to what we're all about. So, I'm not sure if that's been fixed yet. But yeah. Have we got time for it? Let's yeah. finish off for one minute and a half. Let's go for a minute and a half then. So, this really does help, I think, with candidates. It's a short video, but.
can't really tell you about the bank per se, but it's, it gives you the feel of what we're about, which I think is, is really good and really engaging video. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.